So here we have a 2021 Citroen EC4 and in this video I'm going to look at the efficiency and try to look at its maximum efficiency albeit in the winter here. So let's just start this on. Switches on should I say. Right I'm going to turn the heater off because it's all about efficiency. I'm going to leave my heated seat on because it is cold today. It actually says 12 degrees but it feels so much colder than that. I've had to put a jacket on for the first time this winter. It's really windy and the wind is very cold. It feels more like about 5 degrees. So I'm going to have the heating off, seat on because that doesn't use quite so much energy. Um, I'm going to put it in eco mode. There we go. It's in eco mode because that uh, dulls the power to the motor a little bit and just helps you drive that little bit more efficient. But actually on these you've still got a reasonable amount of performance. So if you start off in eco you really don't notice that it's any slower. And I'm going to drive now for um, about an hour. An hour is long enough to get an average. Uh, let me just reset the trip. So if I reset trip two, we can see there my average has been uh, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So my average over 1,745 miles is four miles per kilowatt, you can see there. Um, and that's generally with the heater on as well. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go on to trip two. Oh, and you did see there, my battery is currently 83%. Uh, so the battery is cold because it was parked up overnight and I've only driven uh, about 10 miles to where I am now to my first sort of stop off. I've had to go into the bank and that's why I thought on the way back I'll do a longer circuit to get back uh, or quite a big circle actually to drive for about an hour and then I'll see what I can get out of this um, in the winter and look at its maximum efficiency and I'm going to try to get it over four 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour something like that so anyway i'll record various bits as i go along because the key thing here driving efficiently doesn't mean you have to drive slowly so uh, i'm not going to be going on the slowest roads it's normal roads most of it uh, there's a bit of town work here but most of it's going to be open rural a roads where it's sort of 50 60 mile an hour driving but anyway you'll see all that in the video you'll be able to see what speed i'm driving and uh, be on a mix of roads for a good hour, maybe an hour and a half driving, and then we'll see what economy I've got. Right. So I'm currently in Abingdon, South Oxfordshire. My first stop is just gonna be around at Liddles at the north of the town. So I'm gonna drive through the town for a little bit and then get out into the out on the open roads for a bit and uh, see if you can still get good efficiency in the winter ideally I would be doing this test in the summer with a warm battery and not needing the heater and heated seat on and things actually I've forgotten this has got a heated steering wheel let's put that on as well because today really does feel like a winter's day, even though 12 degrees isn't particularly cold, it just feels so much colder today. It's one of the first days where it's really felt chilly, but it's just wind chill. Right, okay, I'm going to go a different way. I miss this traffic. So rather than go through the town, I'm going to go out of the town and around the ring road. So I'm going to keep this real world driving, I'm not going to be driving slow, I'm now driving the maximum speed limit which is 20 miles an hour here because like everywhere they've gone and put 20s in in all the towns and villages uh, which doesn't I feel slow but anyway um, I'm going to drive maximum speed limit or the speed limit the road can take because of the traffic and uh, just keep it very much real world. 
But when you're driving efficiently, it doesn't mean you have to be driving slowly. It's about accelerating a little bit more gently. And um, it's about um, using the regen to slow you down rather than the brakes. If you touch the brakes, um, obviously you have to touch the brakes if it's an emergency. But if you are slamming on the brakes, that means you're not lifting off the accelerator soon enough. You're not reading that road ahead and you're not doing that coasting. And while you're coasting, you're capturing that kinetic energy and putting it into um, electricity back in your battery pack and extending your range which improves your driving efficiency. If you're braking you're wasting that energy into friction and heat on your brake pads and uh, making your wheels um, black with brake dust which also isn't very good for the environment as well. So like now lifting off I'm just coasting without B mode on I've got to stop. No, she's not going. Right, so um, obviously you use your brakes like I did then when you get to a stop, but it's all about just trying to drive smoothly. And to be fair, if you did the same with a combustion engine vehicle, you would get fantastic economy as well, but people tend to uh, not bother. So I've just dropped it into B mode there to give me a little bit more regenerative braking. That's basically engine braking. And that means that I will hardly need to use the brakes until I've got to that last couple of metres where I take the speed out of the car. But at that point the regen's not really, well should I say the motor isn't really generating much power anyway at the lower speeds. So like now I'm doing all my slowing down. Oh, I have got to touch the brake because I've got to actually come to a stop. I thought I was going to be able to drive through that. But um, on the Citroen EC4 and all the Stellantis vehicles, it does have quite light regenerative braking, which I'll try to show you on this video. Um, so I generally put it into B mode as soon as I start driving and leave it into B mode for that increased braking effect because I'm used to one pedal driving in other, other electric vehicles and while this car doesn't give you one pedal driving the B mode is reasonably strong it's about level 2 on a Hyundai or Kia so it's not maximum but it's pretty good but it's certainly not one pedal you do have to go to the brakes for that last little bit so I'll give you a little demonstration of that for example so if I take B mode off and move in normal drive mode it's a 40 mile hour limit here, so I'll get up to 39.40 and then I've got a roundabout coming up. So if I lift off, we're now coasting and it's generating some power and we can see that on the screen there and it's putting energy back into the battery pack and that slowed me enough, that slowed me down to 22 miles an hour there to go round the roundabout, now accelerate out of it, and I haven't touched the brakes. So all that slowing down I did on the electric motor, which recouped that energy and put it back into the battery. And that's how you drive efficiently. Drive like you've got no brakes. If you pretend you've got no brakes and they failed and you haven't got them, it makes you lift off sooner and coast. And that's how you get efficient driving and it's not super slow people behind you don't get it um, won't get ignored um, not ignored won't get annoyed um, but uh, it's better for your wallet as well you're not wearing your brake pads out and um, it results in pretty efficient driving and then if you're slowing down like I'm coming up to this roundabout now where I actually want to turn left we're doing 40 I'll lift off now we're coasting, but if I feel like I want to go for the brakes, I can then press the B mode. That then increases the regen braking. We're slowing down even more, but it wasn't quite enough there. I did have to just slightly touch the brake pedal. But when you feel like you want more braking, you put it into B. That gives you more braking effect, and that maximises your uh, efficiency because you're... Uh, slowing down on the motor rather than slowing down on the uh, physical brakes. But when you do touch the brakes, if you're quite lightly on the brake pedal and you just press it gently, that does increase the regen a little bit rather than actually putting on the friction brakes. 
so the foot brake on most EVs will also give you some regenerative braking as well but it depends how hard you push it light pushes it turns the regen to maximum bit of a hard push you then push through that and then you get your physical braking and that's why a lot of people say the brakes feel a bit artificial on EVs because that first bit isn't actually braking it's just motor braking and then as you push through you get the traction brakes and there's a often a little bit of a, uh, a pause is the wrong word there's a um, a little bit of a different feel between motor braking and then suddenly friction braking and uh, there are times actually where that can get upset if you hit a, a wet manhole cover or a bump in the road and the traction control comes on it can all of a sudden turn off your regen braking so you suddenly feel like you've lost the brakes and that really upsets people and people think there's something wrong with their vehicle but it isn't it's just how they're designed to work so anyway that's my lesson done um, I'm going to just run into Littles here and I'll be back in a second so that was Aldi not little I often get those mixed up right look at that my camera feed hasn't come on maybe I put it into reverse too quick oh god my boots open now let me just jump out and do that right that's trouble I do everything too quick So let's uh, go on my way. So it's gone back to. No, it isn't. It is in eco mode, I think. Anyway, it is now. Um, let's get on my drive and uh, I'll drive for about an hour and then I'll cut in footage every now and then so you can get a feeling of how fast I'm driving and the sort of roads I'm driving so you can see I'm keeping this very much real world and a good mix of different types of roads and road speeds. on a particularly hilly road here so that hasn't helped my efficiency at all because obviously you use a lot more power going up a hill than you recoup coming down but anyway keeping it real world as always and as you can see I'm keeping up with that Audi TT in front over many miles now and uh, just proves that I'm sort of not eking this out and driving very slowly. I'm doing the, the normal sort of road speed. Well, the normal road speed a little sports car would do. But far from ideal conditions today, it's now seven degrees. It is pretty windy out there and there's also been a lot of heavy rain and I'm not exactly driving on the most efficient type of roads here.
Right, so I've been driving uh, about an hour, I think, and I've just got back. So I think that's long enough to get a reasonable average. And I started in Abingdon, got up onto the A420 uh, north of Abingdon near Oxford, and then drove all the way to Swindon. That's a 60 mile hour road most of the way, some of it was 50, and then turned around, came back, and about a third of the way along, got up onto the rural B roads, and then did a bit of B road driving back to Wantage. So let's have a look at the averages. If I push the button there on the end of the stalk, we can see there, I got an average. If the camera's focusing, come on then, focus. Let's try again. I don't think that's focusing. I haven't got my glasses on. But anyway, I got an average of 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And my total distance was 44 miles. It felt much longer than that. Uh, and my average was 31 miles an hour. So I think 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour is pretty impressive. These are efficient EVs. And uh, this is uh, in winter. Well, it's the 9th of uh, November at the moment, but it's nine degrees. So it's not really winter conditions this year. It's quite mild. So this is more like autumn conditions. And just to recap, I've been driving in eco mode all the time my heater hasn't been on but i've had my heated seat on all the time not that that makes really any difference because that's running off the 12 volt battery um, but i've been driving on a mix of roads mostly a roads uh, and doing the full road speed that the road will allow or the traffic will allow or the speed limit where there wasn't any traffic so um, yeah i think that's not too bad and these have got a 50 kilowatt hour battery with 46 kilowatt hours of usable capacity so if i continued driving like that in these conditions that equates to a total range of 216 miles so this is a 2021 ec4 the very latest model, which I assume is late 23, so a 24 model, those have a slightly bigger battery with different uh, battery chemistry and a more efficient motor. So those have 50 kilowatt hours of usable capacity and that slightly more efficient motor. So those achieve even better. But then that said, 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour on average driving in these conditions i think is actually very good these even these original uh, generation one as it were these are very efficient obviously not in the same league as a uh, hyundai ionic but then nothing else is so when you compare these with the other electric vehicles of the similar sort of size these are very good contrary to a lot of reports or reviews you see online so that will do for this one if you found it useful as always please do click the thumbs up button that really does help do subscribe to the channel as well if you're not and if you want to see more videos on the citroen ec4 there's a link in the uh, video description below to a playlist where you can see other videos on this well other videos which are live there's lots more coming in the future so do have a look back and i'll see you on the next video